Well, Sandra, we just haven't really seen much of her recently, but it is a fun champion. Some follow-ups there. Oh. And we're talking about hovers when BDD was obviously going to play Orianna. Oh. We all knew this. Not allowing it to fall apart completely in the mid-game that Bro have struggled with. So we're expecting a few minutes of fun for the Bro fans. Jump into the ring. Coming off a big one over Hummel Life Esports earlier on this week. As Beryl's going to face check and take Battle Dance first, which doesn't feel phenomenal. But uh, the Winter's Bite Concussive Blow is not going to get stacked up. And Beryl actually going to tank another one. The uh, Braum level one. Pretty strong, as it turns out. Many yeah, I could have known. They're not done yet. They're not out yet. This is actually exactly what I was saying earlier. A, a very aggressive Ooh. level one is a way in which Brion can get a lot of early momentum going. I do think that Deft and Barrel, maybe they can get some poke in. Deft in particular, obviously Barrel uh, doesn't have his quill, as you pointed out. He can test the wave. I think Ezreal is one of the champions that is actually able as to don't fight level one against Ash Brom. Uh, they are just trying to get to this wave. I think dive isn't really looking to be happening. Could have been an angle, but not going to be the case. Nice chain going to connect there. As Pioshik, thinking about an angle here, does find 25 gold within the fake LeBlanc. And Bindi actually kind of happy with how that trade went. It looked really dicey because a whole bunch of the buttons were being landed by fate here. But now we've turned off the information. And in comes Pioshik. He was sticking around. That does mean that Flash has been burned by BDD already in this lane, and we know that Orianna can be susceptible. And it has been something they've been good at. They feel well drilled, you know, when it comes to, to early game plans, as Beryl is going to find himself in an awkward spot, stacking up the Winter's Bite here. The concussive blows do come on down, but Envy just going to get flashed on. The barrier comes in, and it is going to be a one-for-one. -one. Both supports picking up some money. Polo getting the first blood, though. It's going to stop Polo from being able to do too much more, but that is a lot of investment into this 2v2. Is now Def taking a fair bit of damage. Polo is going to be the focus here as Envy is stacking this one up. Def getting taken down solo. Next couple of autos are going to do it as the heal comes in, but it's not enough. And that is Envy and Polo picking up a kill in the 2v2. But we know what Ezreal is able to do. Uh, regardless of what state he is in earlier, as soon as he hit his two item power spike. Ooh. Oh boy. Yeah, Pyoshik on a big rotation. Flash is available, but there is the quickness in. Trusha Barrage comes down as Envy is just going to get kicked away. And that Glacial Fissure did not help out at all. Deft is gifted the kill, and KT back in control bottom lane. Even with double investment of the summoners, Envy ends up going down. As Young J, yeah, should be looking for a punish opportunity here. At the very least, they're going to zone perfect away. Fate's on his way as well. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I think I'm perfect about is staying. He is at least flashing, but is he going to just accept his fate? That is the question, and the answer is yes. Just realizing they're not going to be able to get too much done here. As Envy moving on over to try and uh, clear out at least these minions. It, it's not like you picked the Orianna to. Yeah, crush the uh, 1v1. To crush the 1v1. That's just never going to be the case. It's going to come down to the team fights. I really like the denial of the grubs here. I don't know if it's actually going to work, though, as Fane and Morgan doing a really good job at denying yeah. access to the area. And Mauro Drake is taking it. Young Jay's on his way. Yep. Yoshik is going to come back in. BDD gets over the wall. And it's a Hextech Drake. So these uh, Hextech gates are going to be pretty dangerous here as Polo moves in. That's going to be four if yeah. Yoshi can't find the, the smite and we're going to be having a test. Deft is closer than Envy, though. He does have access to the arrow. Let's see whether that is going to be utilized, whether that's going to land. Three for three would be okay, but it looks like Youngjay does have control unless KT can pressure them away. Smite is up here from Yoshik. If he can get in, that is going to be secured by KT. The arrow is going to be soaked by Barrel, but he's just going to explode. That's a kill going over to Morgan. Is now Polo is going to get kidnapped, and now Morgan in as well. But Culver Meek is so valuable, and Yoshik is trying to get out. It's just not going to work because now it is Viego's version of Cassante chasing them down, and this is what a pickup does. It just chases you to the end of the earth. And that is Young Jay really having a phenomenal team fight. Uh, this would be big though if they kill Morgan. Yeah, he'll miss out on the wave Fade. as well. And so Morgan is pretty tanky. I wish it goes in, but Arrow not going to really do too much. It's going to be soaked as now. Speaking of soaked, oh dear. Um, perfect, going to be in a little bit of trouble. Does mitigate a bunch of the CC, but he's not going to be able to mitigate death. That is going to be Fate locking that one down. And that's an inner turret in trade. 
And yeah, they managed to get some bounty gold, but that is not going to stop this from being a massive win for Bro. That's Xena going down. It's a kill getting picked up as well. Envy uh, and Fate both get hit and get hunted to zeroed in the span of one or a couple of people. This isn't that strong. That's uh, all right. Arrow going to be flashed there by BDD. They do have a fair bit of playmaking on the side of KT. Like, if they do get all of their ducks in a row with their team, and Beryl can play the front line somewhat. You know, he's pretty maneuverable, but uh, Pyoshik getting on in there. There's a safeguard out. I don't know about that one because he now has to just walk. Running out of buttons. Teleport comes in from Perfect. His health bar is back up once again, but the arrow going to connect onto the Cassante. He eats that CC, so that is arrow now down for not much of a response. And Depp needs to hit a few of these Qs. Does manage to get himself out, but my god, the burst damage is ridiculous. And KT, they do manage to at least get into a position to maybe challenge. But that is about it. That's the end of the Hopium. And now Fate comes on forward. Beryl looks for the quickness onto the LeBlanc. She takes so much damage. Pyoshik tries to find her. The kick doesn't get it. And now Fate is able to teleport his way back into this fight once again. BDD over to the side. Will he be able to find a shockwave angle? That's the question. As Perfect is tanking so, so much in this fight. But there goes Pyoshik. That is going to be the Dragon going over to Bro. And Fate has teleported in. And he is named effectively. Because Bro's fate is to win as soon as they have no hope of playoffs. Coincidence? I think not. And Bro, they don't think so either. They're looking to try and get this push happening towards the bottom side. Morgan, full health, Fate coming on over. That is going to be base broken in the mid lane. Not actually pushing too hard, uh, Bro, but they're just getting what they can with the movements that they have available to them. And it's working out very nicely so far. Perfect. I don't think it's going to be able to defend this wave. So that should be the inhibitor turret in the bottom lane falling down. And KT not wanting to lose this without a fight, but I just don't think it's a fight that they can win as Arrow is going to connect. It's soaked by Perfect. He's probably the right target to soak it, but now they're just closing in onto KT. Deft has gone back. He's picked up maybe an item or two, but uh, that's still inhibitor down in mid, inhibitor down in bot. And Bro will just slink away. Uh, what was that one? Outcome-focused assessment. We love outcome-focused assessment. And Renekton, first pick, won. So I'm going to say that it's really, really good. Well, it hasn't won yet. Uh, let's see whether this team fight anything mir 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 miraculous is going to happen. That kick was beautiful. That might be the start of it as MB is going down low. He will be traded for Pyoshik in here, but it's faint with a lot of damage still. And some very heavy wallets. There's the Heartbreaker forward. Deft is flashing away from Young Jay, but he's not going to be able to get anywhere because Morgan comes in and cuts down his former AD carry. That's going to be the end of the game, and Bro Leavers rise up. You might be out of playoff contention, but you can still blue shell these teams that are still in the running. Nexus goes down, and Bros, obviously, take game one unless KT decide that they want to stay there. Having a look at the damage numbers, we know that, you know, Deft was always going to do the most on his team, but it wasn't actually impactful, right? It wasn't actually able to change the fate of this game. A little bit more guaranteed lockdown. Ah, Shen. Obviously, it was Shen. Uh, why, why did I assume that it was anything else other than Shen? because he's been picked all of those zero times. So bullied. And I imagine KT fans look at this composition and feel a whole lot better. You have insane amounts of aggressive power. You have the best top laner on the patch. Or perhaps a fool in this one as Bro 1-0. Let's, uh, let's hop up on the Rift. I got two AD carries. Alistair wants to try and set up. Man, he's empowered all those and stun. Shen really did need a rework, didn't he, when he, when he got one? Because... He had probably one of the most basic kits ever. Do you remember Faint? That used to be his W? You see that... Uh, the last one to play, it actually... Uh, Obviously, Lehens. Yeah, that's not a shock he, at all. He, he was uh, a huge fan of, uh, of the Shen support. That was when he debuted, actually. Was uh, sort of known as the Shen guy. That was in spring playoffs of 2022. Uh, wherever your sword is, you can press your W and then you put down a puddle, which is like uh, 
you know, like the Samira spin where you can't get hit by anything. The blade will, yeah. It just, it's, it's just more like Counter-Strike. Yeah, you're right, actually. You but it's an AoE Counter-Strike, right? So that's cool. Yeah, having resulting lane matchup speed exactly. is really yeah. horrible when your red side is not great. It's not ideal. And I do think you're hamstrung a little bit because of the power of some of the picks right now. Is Pioshik maybe in trouble? Yeah, wants to try and get out of here, but there's an all-out from Morgan. And Nature's Grasp comes in, Flash, and then the Vault Breaker. Beryl is in position. Can taunt them up if he needs to, but he might be sacrificing himself if he does so. The Flash forward from Morgan, and there's the Shadow Dash, but Hepa Pole will result in First Blood going over to Fate with a cheeky rocket from downtown. And that all starts with Bioshik not actually getting his Q over the wall. Yeah. Loads of plates going yeah. on over the KT here. It's not his fault, like, it's just your Cassante. Yeah. So it's not that much you can do, and he does know this is happening, and he doesn't have Flash. Does have reinforcements on the way. Yeah, Plasma stacked up, but his health bar is so low. Great Vault Breaker there from Yoshik, just to make sure that he's definitely not going anywhere, and thus just sort of fell down to a much more high-tempo draft from Bro. This time around, KT have a way better draft and they also have the high tempo drop. And oh my god, Envy has to use his barrier just to eat through the equalizer, but it doesn't get a whole lot of value. And Koshik is just dead again. From KT is, it is very much isolate individual target and blow them up. Yeah. If you can't do that quite as easily, that is quite huge as there is the yes. Gen ult. Stand United coming in there as Barrel looking for a taunt angle. Not quite able to get there. Koshik going to step away from the dragon for the minute. We're going to be very happy about it, obviously. Yep. Um, Beryl just uh, standing around. That is a teleport in towards his bottom lane. Stand United going to be utilized once again, but they're going to try and blow up BDD as best they can. The culling onto Poli, though, and BDD not even dead yet. He finds a few autos. That's a double for KT in the bottom lane. Perfect, taking a lot of damage. They do manage to take him out here as Beryl doesn't have damage himself. That's the Shadow Dash flash. And um, that was a weird thing to do, but it's fine because KT are also taking out a turn at mid, and probably the inner as well. Looks good for a second there for Breon, but KT with the map play still get the better end of that trade. It's like Envy maybe hits a W a little bit earlier. There's oh. oh, perfect. Yeah, nice headbutt back onto Perfect. He's being thrown around like a ragdoll. The Flame Spit is still getting a fair bit of work done, but Polo just soaks it up, and he'll be A-OK. -okay. They are punishing the Rumble here. It's definitely going to be something that's kind of tough to deal with. Envy. Well, yeah, that is uh, Season Assist once again coming in. And Envy going to have to flash. Barrel not finding the Shadow Dash there, so no taunt on to Envy. But he does have to use both of his summoner spells. Yeah, that's all right. KT looking to steal away a blue buff. Right as it ticks over 20 minutes as well. That feels pretty good if they're able to actually do so. And you can see Bro then not wanting to make that one happen. There is the flash forward as, all right, blue buff going to be secured here. And the Bramble Smash gets them out. And so KT, they're the ones with the blue. And Bro not quite able to start a fight that they were looking for. Uh, Polo is able to headbutt someone away, and then you have Young Jay with his ultimate. Could be big as uh, Polo. Oh dear. He just hex flashed over. That is going to be a lot of damage onto the cow as the culling is blocked by fate there a little bit. As Void Seeker could have killed him. Did have the Unbreakable Will running, so it might not have been a full death, Something but they're really strong enough for us. Now, Pioshik has found a cease and desist into the back line. There is a great equalizer this time around. But Young Jay gets on top of Perfect. Stance United invested onto the Rumble. And no one actually dead just yet. BDD dashing forward, but punished immediately. And Envy went down extraordinarily low. Had to use the barrier. And Pyoshik's now going to be seen on the minion wave, is now KT in somewhat of a decent position, but Young Jay, great angle for Nature's Grasp. He's going to throw it in here as Beryl, not quite in range. PDD able to move out of the way of the CC, and KT just moves towards the Dragon Pit. They will be able to stay out of trouble, but this is going to be Bro taking down this outer turret. The Dragon is secured in trade for that one. So KT now is soul point. Should probably dip Breon, but they're not gonna. They're using the Maokai ult. Yeah, Perfect is going to come in as well. Gets a lot of damage, but it's still the Maokai that's able to lock down the Baron. Morgan is gonna go all out, but he's now all out of the fight. If he's just the one sacrifice, though, that is very high value. The rest of Bro, they're not going to be able to make it all the way out just yet, though, as Dev. He wants to kill her instinct, and he's able to deliver a Shen as well. And Polu, he'll be taken out also. Three Barons for two. Maybe you just take that. Maybe that's just fine. So dead even, Atlas. KT yeah. 
I gotta find a pick. I gotta find an individual target and blow him up in seconds. Ocean Soul on the table as Morgan goes forward aggressively. Utilizing that W, there's an equalizer thrown in, and he also gets CC. That's a lot of damage onto Morgan. No teleport to bring him back into a fight. It's now perfect. He has him in the banana brush, and there's the equalizer, but he hesitated for just that little bit. And that equalizer is not going to get the value that it really wanted. Pyoshik is diving in to that backline as BDD is layering all the damage. They take down Depp, but at what cost is BDD? He's also executed from this one. It's the only happening. damage left is Perfect, who wants to turn it onto Envy, and he is still very, very big. But is he big enough to try and take these guys down? He has no flash. He is not getting out, and Morgan's going to get a triple kill. Did you bro leave in the 2-0, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, we both know I didn't bro leave, Atlas. But right now, Breon, at the very least, going to get the dragon. <laughs> uh, I, okay, guys, uh, again, you have the Maokai ult. Like, if you're on the objective first, approaching is really, really tough. Yeah, well, Beryl is going to find a Shadow Dash onto Morgan in that front line. The Cullen comes down. They keep the Baron leashed. As Deft is in trouble, he's just singled out and obliterated. This equalizer is a little bit better, but Envy is still alive. That Moran Malmorty is doing absolute wonders. And KT are being torn to shreds. The Bramble comes down and smashes them. But BDD, he's dancing around the fight. It's now a 1v1, BDD versus Morgan. And Fate, he'll come in so late to the fight after TPing back. And he will end the hopes for KT. Oh, Pioshi and... went near the pit. He has the blast cone. And he doesn't actually use it to get over the wall. That is going to be the Baron secured here by Bro. They then dive on top of the Lucian, who is in just straight up the wrong position. Morgan is looking for depth as he's just supercharging away. It is now a five versus four in favor of Bro. They have the Baron. They have inhibitor turrets bro, removed. Take the inhibs, Bro. You can do it. I reckon they could just probably follow some minions there. They're, they're pretty. Tough and strong yeah, well, minions they, now. They, they could, Atlas, but they're going to do this textbook. Oh, We're yeah. not taking any risks. Everyone to the top lane. Yoshi pulling the wave, trying well. to deny, but th there's a top wave. And uh, Equalizer is up and available, but these are Baron buff minions. I don't know whether that's going to stop any of them from just marching towards the Nexus. Two inhibs now down, bro, just with some time on these Nexus turrets. And did you predict it? Did you know it was happening? Bro taking down KT. As Beryl, he'll be cut up where he stands. Poet will die, but he doesn't mind about that one. Deft is on the fountain, nothing he can do. And the Nexus will go. Bro, 2-0 KT. Oh man, Perfect did a lot of damage. It did not matter. Uh, that is Ezreal losing in the hands of KT and then Rumble immediately afterwards losing in the hands of KT. 2024 LCK Summer OK Thank you very much, guys. This is Susan for the POG interview translation joined by the bros after taking down KT Roaster with a perfect 2 0 victory. Congratulations. We are here joined by Faith and Morgan, the POGs on the side of OK Savings Bank, Brian. Oh, what an upset up against KT Roaster. How do you feel? So, right after I joined in the second round Robin, I got a win and then we were on the losing streak. So today, uh, when I was coming to Low Park, I was like, oh, I wish I could get another victory. And then we got a 2-0 win, so it feels absolutely fantastic. Morgan, it's been a while since we've seen you in the interview stage. This is your first POG of the summer. How do you feel? Yeah, it's been a very long while. I'm so glad that I finally am doing an interview after the POG performance. So, OK Saving Spank, Brian defeated KT, who defeated Hana live with a clean 2-0 victory. It's been a year since you last won with a 2-0 score. What do you think was the key to this win today? So, today, we were approaching the game with a kind of a wider perspective. You know, we wanted to make a plan for the game as a whole, and I think it worked so well. Game number one, so Bro picked Renekton as the first pick, followed by LeBlanc and Viego to support him. I think the draft was ex excellent. Uh, was it your suggestion to play LeBlanc into enemies' Lee Sin? We had several options. 
but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna play LeBlanc. And fate. So you showed a phenomenal performance with your signature pick LeBlanc, making crucial plays for the team's operation. So did you intend to play a role that supports and kind of empowers your team? I don't think it's about the LeBlanc pick, you know. I think it's just the way I kind of approach my role as a bro member. I just want to kind of support my team to function better as a whole team. The fate with you gathering up, you were able to push the enemy away and later on, you guys even won out the team fight very big. So we were, I mean, the numbers doesn't really show that we are having a lead, but I was kind of aware that we are going to be having the control when it comes to a skirmish or a team fight. And then Morgan also told us, you know, he's pretty fed and he it's kind of a, his power spike. So I think the follow up coming from my team was also excellent. Then Morgan in game two, the enemy brought out Shen after a very long time did you anticipate this so th throughout the pick and bend phase we had no idea that they would actually lock in Shin then what was your reaction so I was actually having the last pick card so I was trying to just you know see what I could lock in in order to round out our team's comp and I thought I should be playing something tanky something reliable to support my team and Kasante was the one and in game two so you truly were the Lord Morgan. You let them pick Rumble and then counter it with Kisante successfully. So I think enemies calm kind of would love I could tell that they would love to make a play early on to accelerate their one of their laners so Kasante definitely is a pick that kind of absorbed the pressure of course the laning phase is not easy for him but still as long as you get through that I think he can do a lot of work now let's take a look at this replay. You were taking all the callings and then Bro turned the fight around. So enemy kind of was doing a great job of punishing my position and the lack of like critical skills and summoners I had. So I think they opened up the team fight really well, but also the follow up coming from our team allowed us to turn the fight around. So I just want to say thank you so much to all my brothers. Especially Fates, you know, he was the main shot caller and he helped us kind of organize around team fights. Fates, at the end of the first game, we were able to have a listen to the player comms and you were kind of sternly directing your teammates and passionately giving feedback in the coaching booth as well. It seems like you play a significant role in your team. What role do you see yourself playing in the team right now? Well, t usually, uh, because we have coaching staff and strategy coach, uh, I rely on them to give us coachings and advices, but in-game-wise, I try to be the one that leads the team. Morgan, what do you think about that? Oh yeah, he's doing a fantastic job leading our team. Sometimes he's a little bit, you know, strict, but still I think it's helping us so much. Although the chances of bro making it into the playoffs is gone, you still need to show good performance in the remaining matches. What are your resolutions for the rest of the summer season? Finally, a 2-0 win after a whole year, so it means a lot to me. I'm glad that we were able to bring joy to the fans, and sadly, we cannot make it to the playoffs, but still, I just want to make sure that we are um, developing and stepping up until the very end of the season. I mean, it might sound repetitive, but I really mean it. I want to make sure that we win as many matches as possible in order to bring as much as joy to the fans. And that will be the end of the interview from Morgan Fate and back to the space. Thank you.